Hey, what's going on? Welcome. Thanks for joining me. This is RJ's Cave. This time around, we're working on guitar strings. Before we get into it though, I want to say thank you. I got to thank all you guys who've been watching, subscribing, hitting the like button, the notification bell, all that good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everything you guys do helps the channel every time. And all this activity is great. It's, it's awesome to see. And, and thank you. I especially want to talk uh, uh, call out the guys who are doing the sharing and the ones who are commenting because you guys, those activities, it seems like because they're more than just the hitting a button press that they do a little more. I mean, it just kind of seems that way in, in, in the analytics and all that stuff that they show us as creators. So thank you. All right, guys, uh, all that stuff is really, really awesome. And if you're not doing the sharing and the commenting, if you don't mind, it would really help the channel. Thank you very much. So with that said, guys, we're doing guitar strings. What are we talking about? Are we talking about just talking about guitar strings? No, we're going to talk about some guitar strings a little bit. But we're also going to change some guitar strings, right? Because I figure there's got to be guys out there that they're beginners. They haven't changed them yet for the first time. They don't know what to do. So, we're going to do one string together, and then you guys can do for the other five on your own. It's the same process six times, right? So, uh, before we get into it, here's what you need. You need a pair of cutters. You can even probably find something to use at the dollar store, really. Any uh, decent dollar store might have something like that. It's probably not going to last forever. Probably after a few uses, it's the metal's just soft. But it'll get you through at least your first one and you can learn with. You know what I mean? Your first couple, maybe. Uh, I had one from a dollar store that lasted me years. So you never know. You're also going to need one of these. All right? Or preferably have one of these. You can do without it. It just takes a lot longer. Right, these are about five, six bucks, eight bucks at, over at the counter in, in your local music store. Probably pick them up online for about three bucks a piece. You know what I mean? So if so, look around, but pick one up, pick these up, okay. And you're gonna need to pick up some guitar strings. I'm using these today. These are um, musicians' gear. They're from musicians' friend. Be online. A music retailer here in the States. I don't know if they're anywhere else. I'm sorry. Feel free to look around um, This is their house brand. They're not steel core. They're alloy core. I say this because I've been using them for a while and They actually look pink after a while the the wound strings especially uh, After a while the the actual the just the, just the wound strings, excuse me they seem to have some copper in them, which is also a magnetic material, so it doesn't really affect things that much. So it's not a big deal because you're getting these for two dollars and twenty-five cents a pack, instead of six, seven dollars minimum for, for, for guitar strings. So that's not a bad deal. These, are, if you're playing out or you or doing something like that, go out buy the ten-dollar set of strings that you really like. Uh, to show off and everything, you know, I mean make sure you're ready to, uh, to be at your best, but for practice Until you get that endorsement deal where you got the, the mailman dropping off cartons of these things at your doorstep for free You know, you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> so I mean these are tens. I use tens. All right, you can see the gauges for the strings here All right, they go from 10 all the way up to 46, right? And 10, 13, 17, 26, 36, 46. All right, I hope that comes in focus. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's what I use. Now, some people like to take off all the strings at once and then put on all the strings at once. I guess I'm just old school because you know, I guess I was taught by people who they were older than me and I was a little kid in the 70s. So, you know what I mean? So, maybe that has something to do with them. The uh, acoustic guitars pre-World War II where they didn't have metal truss rods. 
or something like that. Maybe that's a holdover from that. I don't know. But I don't take off all the strings at once when I do a string change. I do one at a time. I know that limits my access a little bit, but that's just how I do it. I don't like to take the tension off the, the neck. I've never had a problem with a neck uh, in, in, while doing this. So this is, I've never found a reason to change this habit. So that's what we're going to do here. First thing, I got to get you guys down here. in my room, right? I'm going to take this and I'm going to loosen this. All right, there we go. La, 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 la. So while we're doing this, if you guys want to check out what's going on over at the channel I got all sorts of different uh, playlists see now this one this guitar the strings come through the body all right so give that a good yank Our number six string, because in the past they number them, right? I have to run it through the back. Let me get this started before I show you guys. All right, because I need two hands to hold the guitar. To show you. First thing I got to do here is when I push the string through, and I got to describe this to you, I'm sorry I can't show it, is I got to move the saddle a little bit so that the string can come through the saddle. Okay. See that there? Of course, we're coming up through the middle of the saddle, right? So the hole goes under the body, through the saddle. it through. Now, as a young kid, I was a bass player first. I learned how to do my string changes as a bass player. And so I never really found a reason to change that. So that's the way I'm going to show you guys. Some guys know some other stuff where they show you the, um, there's a loop around method so that you can loop the end of the string around the string itself while it's winding so that it, um, lock in place better i've never seen a reason to do that so i never actually learned it but if you want to check that out after we're done here by all means feel free to look that up there's a couple of guys who i think have done it in the meantime so you have all this excess string you need to cut that off so what i do is i measure by using the uh, tops of the string posts okay the tuner post I need to make sure the string's in, in place. It's on the saddle proper. From the top of the string post where I'm going to be putting the string, I measure one and two more string posts. All right. Now, I can cut a little bit less than this off because these are guitar strings. As bass strings, you do this to the exact measurement of two string posts. They're longer, the strings are thicker, it's a, and it's a longer distance between string posts, but uh, that all works out to where you get exactly three windings, if you do it right, uh, around the string post. So, and that's what you want. Uh, that's what I'm looking for here. Uh, if I do it like this right now, if I cut right here, I'm actually gonna get about four. So I'm going to go back just a little bit from there. And I'm doing this because I know. I'm putting like uh, not even half an inch, a quarter inch maybe from that. Cut off the excess. And I'm going to run this. So I 
got limited space where I can hold the guitar without it falling off the table. So I'm going to run it through here. All right. And now I want to loop it this way. Okay. I want to go around this way so that I'm on the inside with the string. I'm on the inside of the, uh, the headstock, not towards the outside. All right. Notice all the strings go inside the headstock. They point inwards, not outwards. Okay. So you just want to just leave enough of the string out through the post that you can loop around real quick and push down as you go. Just make sure that you keep your loops under the last one. I can generally get two done by hand when I do this. Okay. And then I run out of string. So at this point, I hold it down. And make sure that this is lined up and the nut, the string is in the nuts, uh, in the nut slot. I get my winder and I'm holding this down so that it makes sure that it goes under the, each loop that it's making each consecutive time so that it always ends up at the bottom. You want to make sure that the string ends up at the bottom of the string post when it's tuned to pitch. This is important for maintaining, uh, Making sure that the strings don't vibrate in the saddles. Let's just put it that way for now. All right, so I'm starting to get there now. All right, I'm going to turn on my, this is my headstock tuner. This is not the most precise kind of tuner, but uh, for ease. I'm just going to use this one. Oops. As I keep doing this, it's going to stretch a bit. It's going to sound like it's going up to pitch, and then it's going to sound like it's pulling on itself back a little bit. It will, and now you can see it's getting close, though. All right. Now, we're not done yet. Now, i got to push it back just a little. I want to make sure you can see. Now i got to stretch the string. Do that by holding it, uh, holding the string down. I do it on the 12th fret. I like to keep it closer to the body so that you're not really yanking on the neck and so that it will bend. From this point on, it's, it really doesn't affect it. So I go to the 12th fret and then I grab it over here on my right hand and I, and I pull. And I get a little leverage and I pull. And you're going to see that this is going to, when I check the tuning again, it's way out. See that anymore? All right, that's a little over, but that's not a big deal. I got to stretch it again. I'm going to do this a couple more times, and eventually, it's going to stop doing this. See how it gets closer now. Do it again, and it should be closer this time. All right, a little more. All right, now from here, this string should stay more or less in tune, and I can go on to the next couple of strings. So That's pretty much going to be it this time, guys. So um, that's basically how you do a string change, okay? That's a basic way of doing it. Nothing flashy, nothing special. Gets the job done. And uh, no muss, no fuss. And uh, chat and everything, I was able to do one string in just a few minutes. So 
Not too bad, right? Anyway, that's how you get it done. I got five more to do, so I'm going to finish this up. You guys, um, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell too, please, if you like this video. And, uh, well, I know you did. I did a great job, right? Yeah, I know I did. Look, if you like the video, please hit the like button, all right? All this stuff really does help us out, and I really do appreciate it. And to always remember, we're on, a, we're on a music quest, we're on a magic quest, kind of, right? Because in the real world, when you think about it, what is, as, what, is, what is as close as you can get in the real world to being actual magic? And then when you think about it, that's music. Because when you learn a song, you can change someone's day like that. So go out there, get motivated, learn, learn how to do this stuff, man. This stuff is it's worth the effort in the beginning. And... Uh, Learn how to make music so you can make magic. All right, guys. This is RJ Skate. Thanks again for being here. Take it easy. Later.